Good morning, everyone. We are here on Crack Rackets, and we are joined by one of the best and, and actually one of the most respected coaches out there in the NCAA women's group. It is Coach Jen Hyde from Florida State, the Seminoles. She is getting ready for her ladies to battle the Gators. Uh, ultimately, the Seminoles and the Gators have a long-standing rivalry. This battle in Florida is not an actual same conference battle. It's different. It's an ACC versus SEC conference battle, but most certainly there's a lot of pride now with the ACC, as I talked about before with Coach Dwayne with Virginia now on the men's side and North Carolina on the women's side, salting <laughs> away some national championships. There is definitely some swag on the ACC side of things. And now, obviously, early in the season, February 3rd, night match, men and women battling each other. And it's going to be fun to see how you guys uh, match up with the Gators here in the early season go. So I guess my first question, besides just welcoming you in today, Jen, is if you had to sum up what describes or characterizes the lady – the ladies that you've had on your team and, and just your program in maybe three words, how would you sum up your team in three words? Well, you should have given me a heads up on this one uh, ahead of time. Three words. Um, feisty. Yeah. Um, fun. Yeah. And um, I don't want to be uh, silly here. Feisty, fun, and competitive. Okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. take it. I, I three That's years important. isn't quite enough, but those those ones matter a lot. I think they do. Most yeah. certainly, as you're going through a full, long, challenging, tough season, you're coming off of a top twenty-five year, seventeen and eleven last year, finishing twenty-four in the nation, and. We just got some recent rankings that don't mean a ton yet, per se. Obviously, it's some subjective feelings about last year and what people say on paper. Once the lights go on and everybody laces them up, then we're going to see what's really going on in the coming weeks, right? Kickoff weekends, et cetera, et cetera. But I would say that uh, most certainly your team has to be a, a contender in the ACC again. And definitely, I would be curious to know just how you size up the strengths of your current team. You know, uh, uh, I think we have a really good balance this year of, of some older ones and some younger ones. I think the new ones that have come into the program the last couple of years have really brought a, a different energy from years past. And then the older ones that are in our lineup and on, on our squad, they have a lot of experience. You know, they one of them has been on two elite eight runs, you know, and been a big part of that when we were two in the country a few years back. Uh, right before COVID struck. So I, I, I love that balance that we have of that youthfulness um, and that, that maturity. Uh, I think it, it's, it's a good concoction right now. And again, we're still, we're still searching just like the rest of the teams in the country. We're trying to find our identity. And, and it's, you know, we've, we've, we had a nice trip out to, to Hawaii at the beginning of the year to kind of go out there and get some time together, play some matches and had a, a good retreat that I think that was hugely impactful uh, last weekend. And, and uh, you know, we're getting our, our feet under us a little bit, had a good contest last week against Old Dominion that took us to seven, five in the third set last match on four hour battle. And and I think that that, that proved that we're uh, pretty, pretty well battle tested already, but there's so much more to come. And then we're starting off on the right foot, but uh, yeah, it's a great group of great group of young women. Um, I'm, I'm, I actually really love coming to work with these guys every day. It's a lot, it's a fun group to be around. That's a wonderful thing to say. Not a lot of people love going to work every day. That is key. And yeah. the, the longevity, how many years now? Coach Dwayne was 25 years in and you Yeah, are... Mark, this is my 20th season here. Yeah, we're right in the middle of it. So The continuity between the two of you, 45 years at the same place, it just speaks uh, volumes and to the, to, the, to the consistency and obviously the way you guys conduct your teams to, to have all of these great seasons and great teams and then be able to recycle it. Having a good year here and there in sports is obviously not, uh, you know, people can get lucky sometimes, lightning in a bottle can strike, but the continuity and the consistency of what you guys have done there is formidable. So again, congratulations to Florida State for keeping you and Dwayne on for so long. Thanks, so speaking Mark. of far off places, uh, you were in Hawaii. I was supposed to go to Australia, didn't go. I'm still here freezing in Chicago, but 
Someone that did play in Australia was Petra Hool, uh, a former player of yours. Tell me a little bit about uh, her and what what's life after Hule like in yeah. Florida State. Yeah, no, Pep has been on the grind for the last you know year and a half. She's really good. She jumped out to get to be like top 400 within six months. Um, uh, and she, she got a wild card last year and this year to, to play in the, uh, in, in the open down there. And I had an opportunity to go down there last year. I told her years ago, uh, whenever she played her first major, I was going to be there. And I, I took off at the beginning of last year, flew down there for about 10 days and, and, uh, was tried, tried to be there for her. And that, that huge, that was a huge deal, uh, you know, playing there in your home, your home country, uh, major. So she's doing great. You know, she's gone through the ups and downs of everything that is post-college. I think um, she's finding her footing time and time again. I think she um, used to, has worked with a couple different coaches and she's now changed where she's based out of. And and I was really excited to kick off this new year. And, and um, you know, she she ended up losing to, I think, for Hotova and the qualifying who's now, you know, won a round or two in the main, 16 years old. I mean, the unbelievable uh, effort, tough one to come across, but a great match, four and four. Uh, it was, you know, I guess 117th ranked player in the world. And, and is a, a couple serves here or there, perhaps that was a difference maker, but she's, she's doing great. And and I think her, her experience here at Florida state for, certainly prepared her for that. Um, you know, and, and we're excited to see how her, her, this next year goes for her. And that's got to make you proud. I really have loved what the ITA has been doing here in recent years now, highlighting and showcasing how many players that have come through the college ranks are doing so well. Now, I saw a recent graphic that had 49, 50 players that played collegiate doubles actually doing well in professional yeah. doubles. So that made me extremely you know, proud and, and happy to see that because again, development, everybody knows how singles works, right? But the development that you get in collegiate doubles that can actually translate onto the tour and have players doing quite well is very important. I. Obviously, I spent some time way back in the day with a few players that have done quite well in that. So I know those long yards. Right. But college most certainly creates that atmosphere. Um, so speaking of life after Hewell, these four freshmen, it seems like you have on the roster. What contributions are we looking for from those four freshmen? Are some of them going to be making immediate contributions in the starting lineup? Yeah, uh, we've got. um We've got one who's coming off an injury, but she's going to start making an appearance here in the next couple of weeks, which is really, really good. Eva Shaw from the UK. Um, she's she's a former. She was initially not going to come to college, I think, uh, and then she got a couple injuries back home. She, you know, played in, in Wimbledon and and was kind of on her way, and then got sidelined with some injuries. And um, you know, we're we're trying working really hard to get get her back to good form and good health. And, and the last couple of weeks have been really, really good for her and for, for, for us essentially with that. Um, Kiara Di Genova, we got her mid-year as well from, from Argentina. Uh, she, you know, had a really good last summer. She beat uh, another kid from Georgia. I can't remember her name, the lefty. That's so good. She's had, she's had some really good wins. She's going to be more of a, a lower lineup player and you know, once she gets herself in there she's just a workhorse she's an absolute workhorse she can go all day long and you know and the teams in the past that we've had that have been the best teams our our bottom spots have just been warriors they just stay there all day long pack a sack lunch and and hang out and and she's one of those types of players as well laura putz uh she got here last fall uh german kid unbelievable we were she's supposed to come a year a year ago uh, but then some stuff with COVID delayed her enrollment so she was able to take the test and then graduate finally and then get here this year. Uh, she's she's going to be like a little ninja for us, not quite like Millie Bissett is as a sophomore, but she she is quick. She is smart, typical German player, just so tennis IQs through the roof. Uh, and then she's she's a she's she's a really, really solid player. We're excited for her already in there. You know, she had a really. Uh, really good match this last week and a good good trip to Hawaii where she's winning some matches, getting her feet under her as well. So um, that and then Maylee Monfils, the, the sister of Gael Monfils, uh, one of the best, best athletes I've ever coached, um, stays out there all day long, can defend as good as others. And we're, you know, continuing to develop her game to be more of an all-court game too because she's so fast and she's able to do a lot of things. Doubles, she's already, she got the semifinals of our, our regional championships and doubles as a freshie, which is a pretty, it's a pretty good run, had match points to get the finals there, maybe maybe get the indoors. So she's done a really good job so far kind of establishing her as a force in doubles and, and, and continuing to grow on the single side. Wow, so that is a darn good freshman class. You have quite the melting pot and you always do. It's it's always an interesting whenever when I 
had a chance to do one of the first college match days and got to meet your girls. They were just delightful. We had so much fun chatting and talking, and they were teaching me all these different uh, phrases and colloquialisms and different languages. I had a great time with that. How do you get the different languages and the different cultures to come together and, and as a, from a melting pot standpoint, get them on the same page, speaking the same common seminal language? Yeah. Listen, I mean, one of the things I found over the years is whether you're from Alabama or Texas or New York or England or France, everybody is so different. Obviously, you've got some of the cultural and the language differences, but humans in general are so different. You could be from Miami and another kid from 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 Orlando and you're completely two different kids. And so I think it doesn't really matter. I don't I don't honestly think about it as, oh, she's European. Oh, she's Floridian. I don't even I'm, I'm kind of blind to that. I think about the kid. I, what are they going to do to help make us better? How are they going to commit? How is their work ethic? How do they perform on game day? How are they going to be a team player? Every single one of them is not a team player when you get here. I'm sorry. College, I mean, tennis players are, are, are selfish. That's how we were raised. You know, my team, my schedule, my travel, my coach, my tournament, my, 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 my. That's all it's ever been about. And part of the magic that we get to do in the college ranks is make them give up that little piece of themselves, that little me, me, me piece for the team. And when that comes together and it takes some time and it takes a lot of work. And, um, but when that comes together, I think sometimes it makes good teams great. And, and I think we've been able to do that pretty consistently over the years. And, and um, I'm excited about it. I love what everyone brings and, and it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to have all those different personalities. Again, I don't, I don't care if you're from Mars. I don't care if you're from, you know, California, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's, let's get to work and let's win for the Knolls. You know, that's kind of the mentality everyone kind, kind of accepts and, and they get behind and, and they take a lot of pride in wearing the Seminole head on their, on their shirt and, and they, they get it. And we have a good mix of internationals and some Americans and, and, and it, it, it's a lot of fun. It's a really, it, they complement each other so wonderfully. And, and, and again, it takes work. I mean, relationships take work, teams take work. And, and, uh, but I, I think we, we've, we've proved over time we, we can, we can strike that balance pretty well, you know, not, not without its challenges, of course, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, it comes together. Yeah. Because feisty and competitive are words that you use. Right. And so if they're feisty and competitive, that means you're getting a great practice product all the time. People are battling. Right. But then you have to draw a line in the sand and say, here's six and here's seven. Someone's going to have to be on the seven line cheering and not on the six line battling. And those become, right? If What if they're roommates together? Like if it's just all of these extra dynamics that, that you have to really work on. And I think, uh, I tell you, I, I've always had the utmost respect for college coaching. I, for many, many years, did something in the Midwest called Davis Cup and, and Baird Cup and it, where I ran uh, an actual team and for the last maybe 10 years, it was the lady side of it. For seven years in a row, I had 10 girls in a van and we had to come together and be a team and be all the other teams and play two duels a day for three days to, to try to remain the best Midwest team in Victoria. And I tell you, I was probably ready to drink by the end of that weekend. I, I was having a difficult time. For those that know me, I don't drink, but I, I was really struggling. Like just being able to get them going at breakfast and get them the team cheering and the singing in the van. And, and so, so that culture and everything you talk about, I, I really understand it just in my own little small coaching microcosm experience quite well and, and realize how tough it is. But I think that also that experience of me trying to get them to be unified for most of my players, they went on to college and ended up, you know, I think being great teammates, obviously, yeah. sadly for you on college match day, Coley Allen was able to get yes. you in a fourth week. I don't ago. want to talk about that. Don't bring that I don't back. I talk about that one, but but let's 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 forget about that one and let's talk about Roland. I want to know career lifetime, how many wins do you have over coach Roland Thornquist? Uh I have absolutely no idea. Um they have more wins over Florida State than Florida Florida State has over Florida. I just know that prior to me coming here, we didn't have any wins over Florida and since then we've had a handful sprinkled in here or there. Uh, the matches have always been good and competitive. And, um, you know, it, it's funny because Roland and I both have kind of grown up together in this profession. You know, I, I worked with Roland 
uh, for a year at UNC when he was a head coach there. And then I, I left and was a head coach at Houston after that. So it's, uh, the, the, the competition we have between us is great. I mean, we, 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 I, I know I love it. I love it. I mean, I, I love game day against the Gators. We all do. And, and, uh, you know, it's been a fun, it's been a fun rivalry over the last, you know, decade, especially. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, and the fact that we get to do it down at USTA and, and it's going to be, we'll probably have 2000 people there. It's going to be um, with the men there as well. It, it uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun match. This will be great, perfect environment for, for the student athletes. I mean, it doesn't get much better. I agree. The synergizing of this is just, it's a no brainer and there should be a lot more of these types of weekends and events and take advantage of such a wonderful campus down there in Orlando. Yeah, so yeah. do you feel that Florida being a little bit closer in geography has uh, a bit of a home court advantage because it's a neutral site, but they could get more fans over. Like, how do you feel? I may mean, ask that to Dwayne. Do you feel like some of the, the Knowles are going to travel? Um, Yes, the the community of of tennis supporters and just Seminoles in general in that region is off. It's off the charts. Um, a ton of our alums live down in that area, even, and I, I think it's probably going to be probably pretty well balanced in 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 the in the fanfare up there. Um, I, I think it's going to be great for both. It's it's great when the people are against you, and it's great when they're for you. It's just that you, you have to love that and. I, I, I expect it's going to probably be loud and be pretty uh, energized. And I, I think the balance will be nice. I think, you know, it tends to get, uh, it tends to get really rowdy. They do a great job with the commentating during the match and, you know, break point and they do all kinds of stuff like that. And, um, you know, we just look forward to it, whether they're for or against us, it's going to be, the environment's going to be electric. It's going to be one of the best environments that college tennis offers. I agree. And I think that the environment part of it, if you think about a college football game, you think about a college basketball game, we are trying so hard, I think, in, in our sport to get more of those environments out there. And so I, I agree. It's it really is uh, a unique situation to actually have the men and the women together playing yeah, at the yeah. same time. And I, yeah. I'm, ex I'm looking forward to calling it. So this Florida team that finished 15 in the nation last year, preseason top 10, how do you look at their lineup, sizing them up? Or how do you see the Florida team uh, that Roland has this year? Where are their yeah. strengths? Yeah, no, they're, you know, they got a lot of, uh, a couple uh, COVID seniors, I think, coming back. Um, they're going to be good. I mean, they're going to be up and down the line good. They've got a good freshman class that came in as well. Um, they're going to be, you know, they, 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 we got to see a lot of them at regionals. We haven't seen a lot of them really since, but, um, you know, they've got gals. They've got, they've got so many kids that can play really high level ball. Um, and, and we're excited for that opportunity to compete against them in that environment. I think, um, I think the level up and down one through three, one through six, uh, on both sides of the net is going to be pretty spectacular. Um, and, and I think it's, you know, as a viewer, if someone's up in the stands, I think that they're going to have a really good time watching the level of play, uh, you know, on both sides of the net for sure. And I think that the, you made a great comment, you know, the regional play I love in the beginning of the season because it does give you that snapshot into some of the other teams. It gives you some eyes on some people. You can get some scouting notes going on because instead of it being just an SEC, I know the Big Ten has a Big Ten singles, right? That's a little different. The regional, obviously, being able to have all the different players from a region allows you to go cross-conference and, and get eyes on. And I would imagine that with your coaching staff here, you've got – uh, see Coach Mark Artizone, who former DePaul coach, who you know, I grew up playing with, and very good friend of mine, one of the top assistant coaches I think in college tennis. And then you have Maria as well. Tell me a little bit about your staff and how they're going to be factoring into, you know, obviously this great season you're going to have this year. Yeah, I mean, you say Mark as an assistant, it, it's kind of funny because I mean the guy could coach me under the table seven days a week. He's probably one of the best coaches um, and minds in coaching that I've ever had an opportunity to to know and, and let alone work, work alongside, um, you know, Mark is, is instrumental and, in, and in, I'm so sorry, but it's um, and instrumental in, in, in our, our part of our development and what we do with our student athletes and, and our training. And he's an unbelievable guy. He's one of, you know, him, he's like one of the best dudes you've ever met in your life. He's is as kind and is selfless and is into Florida state. Mark and I played when I, when I was a student athlete at Florida state back in a year, I'm not going to mention many, many, many years ago, he was uh, like a spar partner that we had during practices back. I mean, literally when we were in our twenties 
And, um, you know, the fact that it's kind of come full circle and I could grab him out of retirement and bring him back to come and be a part of this program where, you know, we once, you know, we were reminiscing about that years ago and now he's back here. Uh, it's, it's kind of a gift. It's, it's, it's a bit of a joke it, it, you know, whoever is able to be fortunate enough to come and play here, you have two head coaches essentially that you're working with, you know, and, and if development is what you're looking for and that's what, that's, what's key to you. Uh, you know, I think that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good dream team as far as I'm concerned with regards to experience that we have together. It, it really creates, uh, you know, I, I lean on him and he leans on me and there's a big learn. We, we learn from each other still. And it's, it's pretty fantastic. Um, Maria brings in, you know, the, the, some youth, you know, she graduated at, uh, from Kansas state, played one at Kansas state, unbelievably talented player. She's really good spar also for the girls. She hits ball, hit a ball that, 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 that's, you know, world-class level balls. Um, you know, she's learning as well, but she also isn't close in age to the girls a little bit closer. So she's kind of in there with them a little bit differently, which is nice, you know, and, it, and, but it, she trusts them. They trust that her on court and, and in match situations and how to navigate, you know, when you play at the high level that she played, she knows, you know, so she, when she sees things happening, she can, she can relate. And so, uh, yeah, and that, like our, our strength coach, I mean, Marissa and our, our trainer, Avery, those guys are on our team as well, as far as our coaching staff, because they, they get these kids ready. They get the student athletes ready and strong and fit and, and healthy. And, and yeah, uh, we're pretty fortunate. We got a pretty good gig set up here. I'm, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, Mark, for sure. I, I don't know if he can play any hockey down there. I mean, he loves that. I think he's obviously taken this pickleball thing very seriously and expanded mm -hmm. that room. But mm -hmm. uh, one of the the selfless word goes without saying. I would say he's one of the most modest, but still at the same time self-deprecating types of guys that knowledge-wise, the respect, I, I think that there's many coaches that get phone calls all the time, getting questions about this side or the other. I think he's one of probably the most sought after opinions actually in, in college tennis. And I always was uh, fortunate enough to have him as a resource here. And I'm a DePaul alum, so I would go over and help him and, and offer anything I could. And so obviously he and I definitely get along and I, I've shared some of those same positive reflections uh, that you're having on him right now. So yeah. taking a look at this, getting back to just the X's and O's and the tennis part of it, it's early in the season. You don't care where you get it from, but what do you think you can find for in this match? How do you get four points in this match? Um, I mean, I think we say that in every match. It's first to four. Uh, it's a race to four. It, 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 and finding four is hard, no matter if you win the doubles point or not. Um, the level of college tennis is so high. Uh, and it, it truly is. And we, we stress this. It's on the day. It's like which team is going to be better on the day, more prepared on the day, um, more competitive on the day, and, and more willing on the day. I think that's the separation. I don't think, I don't think one team, you know, with a certain number by it and another team with a lower number, I don't think there's that vast of a separation. I think there's 60 teams in the country right now that could be top 15, you know, I mean, it's uh, the parody is real. And so how do you five, 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 four points? That's, that's, that's the mystery every single game day. And, and, and it's doable. Clearly, we just we just lost the doubles point last week and and, and took four singles and five three setters and four hours of mat. I mean, it, you just got to be willing to do it and, and and put the performance together on the day. It's on the day, every match day. So. Yeah, I, I agree, because it's so so it was such a topsy turvy duel. I, I did didn't see the match, but I did study the the box score and the amount of of losing the first set, but coming back. Winning the first set, losing the second, still getting it done, losing the doubles point. Old Dominion obviously has very good doubles, and they had a, a top five doubles team here just recently in, in their program. So they they understand doubles quite well. So the the doubles point for certain has obviously a initial swing, but having that take being able to take that punch in the stomach of losing the doubles point, but then some still coming back and winning, uh, being able to win both ways, having a team that has some balance, it's, it's definitely necessary in our sport and. What yeah. makes college tennis quite interesting. I feel that uh, it's just been a privilege for me. I mentioned it to Dwayne. My very first college match day was actually at Florida State. And, you know, it's like yesterday, 2014, that, that that was going on. And so now here we are 10 years later being able to have a lot more college tennis on the tube. ESPN contract now for NCAAs for eight years. Yeah. Just very happy that, that that moment that we had back in Florida State, 
10 years, almost 10 years ago now, is come to fruition and with all this expanded coverage, Crack Rackets is, is showing over 100 matches, you know, obviously on, on the stream and obviously all the different ways that the conferences are bringing forth the, the different uh, broadcasting products. It's just a wonderful atmosphere. It's great time for college tennis. I'm excited for 2024. I'm excited for February 3rd. And I just can't thank you enough for taking the time to stop by, talk a little bit and yeah. uh, let us know how you're doing with um, the Florida State Seminoles. And best of luck to you against the Gators. And uh, I know you've got a couple of W's over rolling. So, hey. Best of luck again, and, and go Knowles. All right, go Knowles. I appreciate it, Mark. We'll see you down there.